or slightly open shape, and then they go to reverse, and they go really high, and they don't rotate at all. And that's a very common problem. Okay, so keep that in mind. Going from a, a big shape to another big shape. You open up, and there's the other. How do you spell those arrows? That's confusing. They hit the in the morning. <laughs> Essentially, you're putting pressure on the bar a certain way, or bars your anchor to Mother Earth. So if you throw the bar a certain way, your body reacts the opposite direction. And also, I'd like to add that if you bend the bar a certain way, your body reacts on the other side a certain way. So keep that in mind. You bend the bar and where you are fixed to the planet. All right, those are our factors. And you know, the center of gravity follows the beat. Uh, when, when swinging gloves. You kind of get that. Okay. Um, signs. We'll move on. Uh, great movement, we must change your shape. We talked about that. Let's move on. I did that already. <coughs> Slide. I'm going too fast, aren't I? Yeah. Okay. You must change your shape to get more rotation. You must change more shape, increase the speed of your shape, uh, increasing the speed also. Not only changing from a big shape, you, if you go faster, you create more rotation. Does it? Thank you. I missed that. Faster is better most of the time. You see, she's having to change shapes to get herself around the bar. She's having to shorter, make her body long on one side short on the other side. This is just a perfect example of changing shapes to establish momentum. How else do we do that when we're little kids? You've all done it. Swing set. Right? If you think about a swing set, we have to kind of, you know, make that tapping motion to get swings going. Give me a place to sit This is awesome. How do you like that bar set? And don't forget, for you, those of you who weren't here earlier, those bars are like this big around and they're oval. Classic uh, training, kind of interesting. Right, a little further. There. So, someone had that figured out a long time ago. Remember what we talked about in shaping? That's one of the first things that jumped out at me. Let it roll through. I'm not really sure why we put this on. Okay, coming up as many drills as you can take, reinforcing the action of moving, snapping from height to large quickly. And, um, certainly the back extension, um, open up to an arch is a great one. And uh, going from even laying on your back, kicking um, to an arch is great. All right, so there we are. Notice that our armpits are over our hands, and our legs are straight, and uh, most of the arch is in her shoulder as opposed to in the lower back. And those are critical factors. Because if you only arch in your lower back, you don't get as much counter rotation and it's not good for you. So the arch come through the shoulder at all possible. Now that's got to be an area that you, you pay attention to. So armpits over the hands when doing this drill. Sure. All of them. Come on. How do we do Come on, suggestions. Which is the toughest one? Right. I, I think the, the indoor place, because the margin of error at point of release is so minimal, and the clear hip is finished, right? So, um, and he mentions this, it's his last, he put it last because it's the last one to teach, because it, it's very, very difficult. And you'll kind of notice even the other night, how many of those did you see? 
is much easier from the toe on or the sculpture. Good. This advantage of the early versus more conventional tap, like the one you would typically do between the bottles. What's the advantage of that early one? Because that's not necessarily true. Um, but you can see that she's opening up, getting loaded on the bar, and then creating that 90 degree <coughs> angle or close to a 90 degree angle, and then firing it open. The advantages in my mind are if you fall in tap like that, you create a bigger swing you're able to bend the bar more backwardly. The guys actually create a little flange in their shoulder and use that flange to jam open and bend the bar even more. They're creating length and they're creating bend in the rail. Here's a traditional tap between the bars. And I don't know that, you know, it's certainly earlier than the other one, but she gets open, she's already open, and then she's very quick with her feet and then throws. Remember yesterday I talked about uh, in flyways, different people have different rhythms, and you have to kind of pay attention to their natural rhythm of their tap. I think that's true in this skill, too. Um, I'm going to show you a catch up at the end that's tremendous. It has a very late, quick tap. They have to, because you have to establish the right direction. The only way you do that is by starting to feel a little quicker. So she's in and out. But the common thing you're going to see when they swing up in the front, if you could stop her in the front, They've done exactly what Tom talks about. They've created an angle to work against. It's right, a little late, right when she picks her feet up. She's a little shallower than the other one we looked at. She's, I like to actually see a little more <coughs> angle there. She's got a really great shoulder throw, and she knows how to rotate her hips around and back. So let's go on to the next one. It's much far bent as I'd like to see. There's the angle. See it? And that could probably be a little deeper. And then she counters it. This one, there's an early one on one side. And you guys all saw it last night or the night before. It's phenomenal. And I think she also does. There's the early one. And the thing I like about what she does in this earlier tap, how much tighter is she than the other girls? Can you guys see, I feel like what she does is so good that she actually pushes. She just doesn't, you know how kids fall through their hands, like all fall through your hands? She's actually pushing back and tugging on that ball. She's creating a slingshot. Boy, it's, uh, it's phenomenal. Kids that tend to be a little tight in their shoulders or don't understand how to release their shoulders and the hips properly, they tap in the knees. Then the coach tells them to get their knees straight. Guess what? Bad things happen because her tap is through her, her, her knee. She's going to fix that and actually use that motion to kick. So you have to be a little careful with that. You can't take that away without giving them something to work for. Work for. Does that make sense? How many people that I just confused? It's pretty interesting that she used two, two different methods, huh? Isn't that interesting? I thought that was a cool take to look at, that she could do both methods. And almost all of it is in the hips. But if you really think what men do, they create more angle through their chest and their shoulders. I think that's probably because of the differential in shoulder strength and their ability to clear their shoulders. So if you have a girl who opens the shoulders um, involuntarily, you, you, you don't even have to try. You're, you're going to open your shoulders on the other side. Okay, so, yeah, then I, again, I, I'm going to talk about right now real quick, I'm glad you brought that up, about shoulder flexibility. Some of the best accountants I've taught are kids that are not passively flexible, but they're dynamically able to get, I say that right? They're able to get through a motion holistically and do the motion. So I, it's not really a pure flexibility thing. And sometimes the kids that are real flexible have a very poor throw. They're, they're weak and they're slow, and they end up not being that great at it. So, good one has height and rotation. I've seen them done every way. I've seen mega height, the sigh off the bar, no rotation. I've seen beautiful rotation that looked like they were going to skim across the bar, and they catch almost parallel to the floor. But the ideal, the gotcha, has both of them, and an equal blend of them. 
right? And I think the judges now have an index where they look for both height and rotation. I hope they do. And, and it should have both. That one has height, but not enough rotation. This has it all. So, height, gotcha. I saw two of them, right? One of them caught kind of in a support, almost. That was pretty interesting, wasn't it? The one that kind of was still over the bar and she pushed the legs out. And uh, this is the real deal. And you see that the hips rise and then we rotate around the hips. The key for all the hips, by the way, is not the throw, it's the leg drop toe on, creating energy. And the key for the big Takacha is the fall and the tap, not the throw. Your, your energy is generated on all these skills on the front side not the back side. Cause and effect. How much length? If we could look at creating energy right there, getting away from the rail, people on very late, hips rise, and then we rotate around a fixed point at the hips. Okay. I'm not sure, guys. You want to, yeah, you want to jump in on this one? way to generate momentum and energy. Really nice. Um, even before the toe hack up to the high was popular, I taught it toe front and toe hack for the Takacha motion. Not, not to teach him that skill, but I'd actually teach him toe front in a straddle height shape. Does that make sense? Because coming from toe on, it's a big dramatic shape change, and it's easy to feel the hip in the counter rotation. So here we go. And she couldn't generate much energy from a little toe on action there, so it's relatively small. One thing that she's learning how to do, by the way, is land safely. What happens when you miss a big reverse act? Where do you land? Uh, on your stomach, I hope, if you rotate the stomach. So how many of you take time to prep your kids on a stomach landing? You've got to do it. And you should prep them from three-quarter back on trampoline to the stomach, backdrop kick, straddle through to your stomach. They should be very proficient at landing the right way, you know, in the right position. And I'll show you that in the next couple of ways. They just don't know that they're starting to reverse that. The, the reason why it's difficult is your angles, where you take off and where you do the trip, are just, you've got just a narrow window. And uh, it's just a very, for a timid kid, or a timid coach. And we've had some kids do that facing away from the low bar and going towards the low bar. I was amazed. And, uh, they, they do it that way because then the longness is not an option. Okay, so um, here's a little bit about um, spotting. Um, you can see they take their leg um, very early. Now, I want you to watch something on that foot, by the way, I think is common amongst the kids that are successful on both Shikash and um, this skill. Our hips rounded right there. What's she doing? She's falling open. And then as she gets near the bottom, that's where she contracts and starts to circle. That sets up the timing of where she's going to go. What is it? What is it in a big swing? What do we call it? Tap. She tapped him. And it generated enough energy to launch from low bar to high bar, like in the Chicago, or to go really high. On a head, you've got to create this length and this speed and this energy. That's your shape change. 